What's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Thomas Copley and today's video is a very short one, but it's a very important one. Today I'm going to be showing you some of my favorite tips when it actually comes to finding that location for your next backpacking trip. Sometimes that's the hardest part is just finding that trail in the first place and knowing what you can and can't bring and where you can and can't go. So the first thing we're going to go over is actually the tools that you can have access to to finding that next location. The first one and the most free and the most popular actually is word of mouth. Who do you know and where have they been? Ask around and find local communities maybe at your school or at your church or wherever you go and figure out where they've been and what their favorite locations are. Now, the next tool that you have is actually a website. It's called alltrails.com, alltrails.com. Now, I know that this website is typically used for like day trips or like runners or hikers and stuff like that, but it can actually be used for backpacking too. What you do is you'll go onto the website and you'll search for a city, a park, or a trail name. Now, this website is typically gonna give you just the more popular ones. They aren't as good for finding those off the side trails, but they're pretty good at finding the popular stuff. So if you look up a popular trail around you, like the Cumberland Trail, they'll pull up Cumberland Trail State Park. I spelled that wrong. Cumberland Trail State Park. And you'll go into Cumberland Trail State Park and you can see everything about there. You can print off a map. You can click the top trails here and you can click on them. And if you do click on them, they'll bring up all the information, route type, out and back, length, six miles, how hard is it? It'll show you the map and some pictures, some descriptions, the weather. So it does have a lot of good information. But the thing that I found with alltrails.com is that they're going to give you the most popular trails. They're not going to give you the ones that nobody else knows about. So if you're looking for some stuff that's kind of off the beaten path a little bit more, you're not going to find the best options on alltrails.com. Now the next tool that I have for you is one you've heard me talk about before and you're going to hear me talk about it for videos to come. It's called Onyx Backcountry. Onyx Backcountry is absolutely amazing. Very small subscription fee and you have access to so many features. Now when you actually look at the app, this is on the computer, but when you actually look at the app, you'll see that it's a, it's a map kind of similar to all trails. But the thing is, it's a lot more customizable, okay? So you see actually some stuff that I've, I've done around here. A lot of times I'll click on it and then hide it for future reference just so it doesn't clutter up my map at all. But this is just stuff that I've forgotten to take off. But basically it's a map that will show you basically what you need to know. If you zoom in here, um, it's actually going to turn into a topographic map, a topographical map, which is going to show you elevations, and it's going to show you rivers, and it's going to show you mountain peaks and stuff like that. So now, uh, off to the side here, very similar to alltrails.com, it has the most popular routes around you, and you can click on that, and it's going to bring you to that on the map, and it's going to show you the path and how strenuous it is, conditions, nearby routes, activity, total time, estimated, elevation gain, distance, all the stuff like that. But then actually it's gonna show you everything, really. That's the difference is you can find paths that are off to the side that not that many people know about just by using this. You zoom in all the way and you can see some paths that are recommended. Like this is the Cumberland Trail, which goes all the way through the state of Tennessee. And what's really cool is like, like this whole time it's gonna be showing you the red and the orange and the green. It shows you how hard the trail is right there, which if you look at the topographic map, you can see this because uh, there's a huge hill you're climbing up there with a bunch of switchbacks. That's why it's uh, really red. But that'll kind of give you an idea of, okay, here comes a really hard part of the trail as you're navigating, or just is the trail doable with the group that I'm going with in the first place? So there's a lot of things. You can customize it, you can click on areas, you can add waypoints if you want to, you can add a waypoint, you can change the, the picture that it uses, the icon, the color, the, the title. You can save routes and you can actually customize your own routes and then you can actually download sections of this as an offline map. So that's the main thing that I love doing is I'll plan my route, plan my campsites, plan the stop places where I'm gonna fill up water and stuff like that. And then I'll download that offline map. As you can see off here, you'll download the offline map and you can use that without any data. And it's gonna actually, when you're navigating, you can click navigation. And when you're navigating, it's gonna show you which direction you need to go. It's gonna show you how fast you're moving about on average if you're on track to make it to camp on time. And this is all while it's being offline. So it's a great feature to have. Now I'm showing you this on my MacBook. So this is of course not what you'll be using on trail, but it has an amazing app. The app I actually think is just as good if not better than the website. Um, it has an amazing app that you can use to navigate while you're on trail. So you just bring a little backup power bank and this is gonna, this is gonna keep you safe. Another tool that you have that I feel like we're losing more and more as time goes on because of how great like technology is getting is actually calling the park or calling the ranger himself. This is gonna give you a lot of personalized information. If you really wanna know specific details about the best place or the best trails or what you need to bring, this is great because you can ask literally face to face or over the phone to this park ranger what you need to bring and what you need to plan on. The 
chances are this park ranger also has a lot of the hidden gems of the park or whatever like that so he can recommend a lot of stuff to you also a lot of these larger parks the larger park the better the website typically but usually these larger parks will have a maintained website with a lot of the information that you need as well it's great to call the park ranger or check the website anytime you're going anywhere because you always need to be aware of what permits might be required for you to do the backcountry camping another tool that i use actually for a lot of inspiration is like instagram or like snapchat or just a lot of these social media platforms because social media is such a big thing nowadays a lot of the national parks or even smaller state parks will have a social media account and what they do, especially like the National Park Service Instagram account, is they will have these compilations of different state parks or different national parks around the United States, and they're gonna have like the best and most beautiful shots. I use this all the time. I'll see something that they posted, and I'll be like, man, I really wanna go there someday, and I'll write down the name that they included in the description, and I'll know where I wanna go someday. All right, so now that you know the tools that are available to you to be able to find the trail to go on, let's look at actually some specific ways to figure out what trail you're gonna go on. So to start off this video, we're gonna talk about like local locations around you. Local locations are great when you have like just a weekend to go, you don't wanna have to travel super far to get to this trail, or like you're going with a larger group, or even your family where there's somebody that doesn't love backpacking absolutely, but they're okay with going as long as they don't go on this super hard, strenuous hike. It's great because it's gonna cost a lot less money, and it's typically a whole lot more accessible. Also, local's pretty great because a lot of times they're smaller, lesser known trails or lesser known state parks. And the less known that something is, the less people there are gonna be. So if one of the big priorities you have when backpacking is not running into that many people, the local parks and stuff like that are actually gonna usually be a better bet for you. Sure, it's not like Glacier National Park or anything like that, but I'm sure there's some hidden gems in your state that are actually beautiful and super accessible. Many states actually have their own websites to locate state parks within it. For example, my home state of Tennessee, They've got a Tennessee State Parks website where you can go, you can find a park by clicking on that with the map or the alerts map where you can find activities that are around you, boating, camping activity. So it really allows you to narrow it down and it's gonna bring you right to a park. So let's say I click on this A to Z park, it's gonna give you a list of the map here and I can click on something near me maybe, the little thing there, Fort Loudoun State Park. And then it's gonna pull up the little sub website of that area and it's Fort Loudoun State Historic Park and it's gonna give you information. It's gonna make, uh, it's gonna allow you to see what the website's like, some things that are going on, some activities around there, a map you can download. Anyways, my point is, is that most of your states are going to have a state park website. So check it out. It's gonna give you a lot of great information on some hidden sites that you might not have known about before. Now I do wanna give you a heads up. Although lesser known trails are great because there's gonna be less people on the trail, it's also sometimes a downside when you're looking for parking because a lot of these smaller trails aren't gonna have huge designated parking areas, kinda of like the Grand Canyon would. Now Onyx is great, like I said before, it's absolutely amazing because it actually shows you most, I'm gonna say most, it actually shows you most trailheads and parking areas. So let's say Cumberland State uh, Trail State Park. So you zoom in here, you see this little person guy and you can click on him and it's gonna tell you the shut-in gap road trailhead park you know, it's gonna show you nearby routes, the weather, it's gonna show you the overview, and you have the coordinates. So you can copy the coordinates to your clipboard, you can go paste that in your whatever um, navigation app you use on your phone, you can drive right there. Now the thing is there's not always gonna be a perfect trailhead for the smaller areas. A lot of areas will actually just have you park on the side of the road and you walk to the trailhead or something like that. Just make sure you do some research to make sure that's actually allowed where you're going. Something that I'll do is I'll actually check Onyx to see if they have a parking spot listed there. And then I'll actually double check that same area like on Apple Maps or something like that. I'll look at the satellite and be like, does that look like there's actually a parking spot there? Or is it like some middle of the forest thing? You know, just double checking things can really make sure that when you pull up to the area, you're not rudely surprised by the fact that there is nowhere to park. By the way, I'm sorry about the construction sound behind me. Somebody's doing construction right outside my window, so yeah, sorry about that. I'll try to speak up. The next spot we're going to talk about is actually like the not local areas, like the national parks. Now these are any backpacker's dream. Any backpacker wants to go to the biggest national park and go into the backcountry and camp right beside a glacier or something like that. Now there are plenty of pros and cons to choosing the national park. Some of the pros is that it's a lot easier to plan for, like their websites are going to be very well developed, very well maintained because they have a lot more people going through them so they're going to need to make that information accessible to them. They're also definitely going to have like designated parking. They're going to have probably a large area for a lot of people to park right at the trailhead. Now some downsides are the larger the park, the more rules they're going to have, the more specific rules they're going to have, which is a good thing because there's more people and they need to control how we impact the environment around there, but they're going to have a lot more rules. And some of these might include, a lot of them actually are going to include backcountry permits. Now backcountry permits are what they sound like. It's a permit that you buy from that national park that allows you to camp 
on a trail in the backcountry. And most national parks are going to have these, if not all of them. So when you are planning on going to a national park, you want to do all your information gathering before you actually head out there, of course. So you're going to want to look at their website for what permits are required to bring what stuff, and what stuff are you allowed to bring, and what stuff are you not allowed to bring. Are you allowed to camp just anywhere, or do you have to go to designated camping places? Because a lot of the national parks require you to camp in a certain area, even if you are backcountry camping. And then what do those campsites offer? Do they have a fire ring? Do they have potable water? Do they have like bear canisters to hold your food? Where am I going to go to the bathroom? Do they have like a little pipe in the middle of the area you go to the bathroom in? Do they have outhouse? Do they have shower house? Or do you have to go into the backcountry and just go behind a bush? So just do your research. And like I said earlier, there's always the option to literally call the park itself. That's always going to give you the best information because it's coming right from the source. Now, something that I want you to remember also is that the more desired a certain hike is, the harder it's going to be for you to actually be even allowed to hike there. That's one of the bonuses to a local area compared to one of these large national parks. A lot of times, as long as there's not some local hunting event going on, a local area is going to allow you to hike on it whenever you want to. However, these larger national parks are going to have a whole lot more rules as to who's allowed to hike there and when they're allowed to hike there. For example, Angel's Landing in Zion National Park is this huge desired place that people want to hike. And there were so many people going through it that they had to create this thing that they actually called the lottery. So you go onto their website, you see, and it says like you can apply for a hike or whatever. And it's actually just a lottery. It's going to give you all this information and then you can click on registration. Okay, so this says registration is closed right now. That's probably just because of the time you're going to do it. But my point is, is that it's actually a lottery system, they call it, which means that you can apply and pay the money for the permit. You're not even necessarily get it. Probably going to have to apply and reapply and reapply until finally you're drawn for that hike. So just keep that in mind. The more desired that a hiking location is, the harder it's going to be to get in there. I would hate for you to arrive at your dream place and then just realize that you actually needed a specialized permit that you didn't get drawn for. Now, a few things that you can apply actually to local or national park trails that you're planning on going to include like what you want out of this hike. What is important to you? Do you want to be alone where you don't run into another soul while you're on this trip? Otherwise, it's going to ruin it. Or do you not mind running into a few people just to see the most popular stuff? And keep in mind, who are you going with? Are you going with your family and your two three-year-olds, which aren't going to be able to hike up that huge cliff face? Or are you with a huge group of experienced hikers that do this all the time? Keep both of these in mind when you're trying to choose the location and you're trying to decide if the trail is too hard for you. So look, I know that finding a trail is not everybody's favorite part of planning out a backpacking trip. And when I was starting, and even now, it's probably one of the hardest parts of planning out the trip. It's hard to know like what permits are required and where I'm allowed to go and what I'm allowed to bring and where I'm allowed to camp. It's hard to know all of that stuff. But I hope this video is going to allow you to at least have a little more access to more information. I've given you some great tools that have helped me in the past and I still continue to use right now. And I hope that mixed with just some good research on your own is going to be able to allow you to pick the perfect place for you to go next time. So that's the video. I hope you enjoyed it and you found it helpful. And just let me know in the comments what you think.